I always think the thing that's nice about this time of year is it's so unpredictable. You never wind up knowing a day ahead of time what's on the agenda. And today we woke up not knowing if we were going to be snowed in or rained in. That's kind of a pain in the neck, but that's what I enjoy about this time of year. Now I can plan the day out. The problem is when every day is exactly the same as the day before, in our case, the middle of the summer. And at some point in time, it's like, oh no, another bright sunny day. But this time of year, every day is unique. It's really great. We did get a couple of rides in. It's been really, really unpredictable though. And that's, I guess, I guess I'm confessing here. That's how I like it. I just have that thing that if every day is the same, you're basically in prison. So it'll be a unique thing today to try to plan out a day that we can use this day efficiently. We do have a bit of a storm coming through, and it may be a storm for the next two or three days. That's what they said. And it's right on the cusp of being snow or rain, so, which makes it even more fun. And it just couldn't be nastier outside. This is what I'm talking about. So we're going to plan a very special day today. And when I did get to see our neighbor Mike this morning, he was walking his dog. They were very, very careful not to give us an exact day. He just said, as soon as possible. They're going to take Treezilla down. And the sooner they do, the sooner I can sleep well at night, and so can Bill. Because if that tree comes down, my motorcycle collection might become a pancake collection. But for sure, one thing never changes. The taste of that coffee on a totally crappy rainy day. And it may be rainy for two or three more days. So after warming up and having a cup of coffee, I got to make a real plan for today. And this is going to be a little bit more challenging than I thought it would be. I have the primer drying up here by the heating vent, and that's going to dry overnight. But I really can't paint in this weather. You know? So that's kind of a, uh, a no-brainer. I got plenty of parts to work on in sand. So what I always try to do is figure out, I try to make each day a little bit different than the day before. So I do have some stuff I want to work on here. Let me just look at this. I had figured out that I would paint this one shiny black. Actually, these three here shiny black. These two can stay flat black. And so I'll work, I have this to work on today. There's no way I can paint, but what I did this morning already, I already know it. I have to make a trip down to Gavin's. And what's going to happen today, because it's raining, is a good day to make a trip down to Gavin's. I need to get some supplies and some sandpaper and and whatnot. So because of the weather, it's going to dictate what we can do today. I have those flat black parts. I have this I can sand. Actually, I can get everything ready for primer. And then if it stops raining, it's not really going to stop raining today. Or tomorrow, I'll be ready to do some painting. And I do need to get some more Bentley black. So actually, even if it wasn't raining, I'd have to go down anyway. So with that in mind, I guess I'll just see if Karen, see what I always try to do with Karen, she needs to go to certain places on food shopping and whatnot. She really doesn't drive much anymore. So we try to combine all our trips and on a day like today, once I have a plan made, one of the things I know I need, believe it or not, I'm down to the bottom on sandpaper. I've got to pick up another sleeve of sandpaper. So it'll be a productive day. It'll be a good way to use the day. Now, before I head out to uh, to Gavin's, I like to check and see because I'm, I'm so happy with this Indasa sandpaper. See if it's any cheaper out on uh, on Amazon Prime, and it probably is here. And here's always the problem, buying things off the internet. The back of the sandpaper says 2,000 grit, and down here where they're trying to sell it to you, it's 1,000 grit. So when you buy it in a body shop supply, you, know, you don't run into that problem, but... Anyway, the Indasa products are all listed here. I'm sure I'm, by the end of the day, I'm going to figure out if I want to get them offline or down by Gavin's. But it's always good to have, and I told Scott this, a good body shop supply that you can trust. So here's the best price I found, and this is on Amazon Prime, just for reference. It's 100 sheets, and they're full sheets. Don't be fooled. See, some of them, they sell you half sheets. Full sheets, 9 by 11, 100 sheets. $45 means it's a nickel a sheet, and it's 2,000 grit, 
and it's rhino wet and that's the product we like so i'm just gonna have karen order that and by the way that was cheaper than the last time i bought it at gavin's uh, significantly cheaper and free shipping and that's always the point there's some things you can always get cheaper on amazon and some things more convenient and some things you just got to go pay the price at the body shop supply now this is pretty funny karen's shopping around for this and from $45, we got it down to $34 for 100 sheets. She's a, she's a good shopper. I just thought I'd mention to people, this is good information. I have a, a whole drawer full of all different grades and types of sandpaper. And down here, I have sleeves and boxes. And it's very, for me, it's very, very critical to have the right sandpaper to do a job. As an example, if you only have, and I do have some down here, 1500 grit, and you're going to buff, you're going to use a lot of buffing compound. And by the way, i got to add that to my list. i got to get some more of that 4CR. But it's always good to check your inventory and, and make sure one trip to the body shop, you get it all, or Amazon, and, or just have Karen order it for you. <laughs> now another thing, this is the, the Rhino Wet 2000 and the 4CR has become the staple for putting on that final finish and i've got a drawer full of every grit of paper and i've got i probably have a laundry basket full of different buffing products the combination of the rhino wet 2000 and this i think it makes it basically as easy as i've ever been able to, been able to buff stuff out and i have spent a lifetime buffing things out so now that i've made a plan it's very simple these parts are steam cleaned. They're cleaned with simple green and steam. When I get back, assuming Karen doesn't have something else she needs me to do, I can get sanding away. And as always with leapfrogging, a day like today, if the only thing we could do today was paint, then we'd, we'd have a wasted day because we wouldn't be able to leapfrog our way into uh, the world domination. Or, no, or not. Anyway, every time I look at these parts, I'm inspired to just do the best possible job I can. This, this I think, is really going to be a really nice project when I'm done. Already in the cart. All you got to do is hit buy it for Wendy. <laughs> now we're back in business. We're back in business. Back in the USSR. Here we go. Another one. Ay, 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 ay. Now what could be more fun than coming here in the morning? <laughs> And you're the guy that mixed that Yama Yellow. Boy, that bike, I, unbelievable how good it looks. It's, the, it's, it's all in the mix. Take, take a bow. It's all in doing this. Yeah, I know. It's all in doing this. It's all in writing a check. So as we leave, the world famous Gavin's, and it couldn't be any more famous than that, with the official Stevie Wonder paint mixing company. Oh, we're, we're all liquored up here. We're ready, baby. We have a whole quart of Bentley Black. So we used a crappy rainy day, we got our supplies here, we should be really in good shape. What could be better than a box of supplies from Gavin's, Indasa sandpaper on the internet, and fresh coffee. So the first thing I did here, back from Gavin's, and we're all supplied up for the moon, this piece actually snaps right in, there's little tangs that snap it in. I think that's going to be pretty cool that we can see that right through the windshield too. I originally thought I would leave this part flat black just to have a contrast, but the more I see it, the more I think it'll look better shiny black. But again, this is a part I'm going to have to, when I get it sanded, I'm going to have to back mask off all of the little tabs and tangs, because this part actually, let me get it out of here, it snaps into all these little areas, and it's got some, actually this is pretty nice, this is the windshield mounting hardware, I'll take that out just so I don't have an interference fit there. But well, let me go through this one, just so I can show this. When this part goes in, there's a little tab, and I've been real careful to keep that tab. It actually snaps right in. And I don't want to lose that fit that it snaps. Obviously, it bolts in. It has two little Zeus fittings, but that's a, that's a critical part to the front of the motorcycle. And I think that having that carbon fiber instead of the flat black it was and having this shiny and i'll even get it shiny under the windshield here and i know you don't see the parts you don't see i don't want to have a giant paint build up there that's the issue and this has all these nice little tabs and tangs and 
it's, the more I pull a support, the more I think it's a pretty nicely engineered guy. So I received an email from Scott the other day, and he was curious about the sanding blocks, and I don't know if re any recent videos I've gone over this, but I thought this would be a good time to share the information with Scott since he's starting to paint his project bike. Now, what I wanted to explain is this is a soft block. You could buy this. You could buy it in Gavin's where I was today. It's, it's a relatively hard rubber. It has on a piece of, I guess this is vinyl or something, so that sandpaper, it's made so that sandpaper sticks to it when you're doing sanding. Now, what would be appropriate on a part like this would be to do any of the flat spots, any of the spots that are going to be flat. However, when you use a sanding block or you sand, and no matter how you sand, you want to avoid doing this on the mountaintop or you wind up going right through. So that's, and, and again, this will be a short demo. This is a, a relatively soft sanding block, number one. Number two, there are hard sanding blocks. Now this one is a little bit different. It's got little pins that hold the sandpaper, but this is like a rock. This is like a tire. This is more important, I would think, if you were sanding not this shape, but a totally flat shape like a car hood. Something where it's very flat. This would be to your advantage, as opposed to holding the sandpaper in your bare hands. So that's a hard block. Again, these are, all these things you could buy on Amazon. You probably could spend 20 bucks and have one of everything. This is a real expensive thing. This is actually, Les Demet contributed this when we were modeling. It's called a permagrit block. It's carbide, tungsten carbide. So you can actually shave aluminum, shape aluminum, and it's got a rough side. And of course, it's got a fine side. We really don't use that in body work. Then there's the one that, and I know this is, if, if Joe Adamusco is watching this video, he's gonna laugh. Bob Martens, when we were building Spitfire models, made us each a set of, these are just ordinary plywood, sanding blocks. Bob Martens, that was probably 20 years ago. Well, the idea of this is you would take a, let me get a piece of sandpaper here, just ordinary sandpaper to show. But what's good about this block, and again, you can use these wet, use them dry. Most of the time you're doing finishing, you're doing everything wet, almost everything. And by the way, that when you order sandpaper, you want to make sure it's always wet or dry, not, not dry. So this would be good. I could get down in that corner, down in that angle. I can get where my fingers won't go. Because it's got, if you look at one end of it, and Scott, if you make, Scott's a woodworker, so you could probably make one of these with scrap around your shop. You want to put a bevel edge on. Let's see if you can, if I can show that up close, the bevel. Well, what the bevel does, it'll allow me to get down in there and down in there and all these little spots that would be difficult. The whole idea, put that one away. The even better one is an ordinary paint stick, which Gavin's donated another dozen to my cause. And if you see, you take the stick and you put a point on it, on one side, this will be flat and then beveled. So now what that allows me to do, just by putting it, I'm not gonna do it, it's, I'm just gonna show it as a demo. Get down in any little areas and get down, and if we were gonna paint there, and maybe down in there, and of course, any painting, the most important part to get an etch on is the valley. All the valleys are where the paint's gonna wanna peel up more than likely. So to make this a, a reasonable demo, and I don't have to show this to Scott. <laughs> he was the one donated these to our cause. And look at, you can cut these. They're soft. This would allow me to get down in there, down in there. The point is if all you have is your fingers, you're not gonna, you're gonna have a, a difficult job or a very sloppy job. Now, this is one of the things, I don't show this often because this is from my modeling days, but I'll show. I've got about a third of the ones you get. They're called polywogs or tadpoles. And what these are is different shapes of sanding blocks, reverse radius, minus radius. And what you do with these, if you can envision this, usually you would use these in modeling. This has a curve right here. So it allows you to build a nice curve right in the part that you're working on. And they're hard rubber, they're made with the rubber that's about like a tire. 
These again, you can get from Amazon, you can get them on the internet, you can get them at a body shop supply. I don't remember if these are called polywogs or tadpoles or frogs or what, but they're super common. At Gavin's, they have 10 different brands of these sitting on the shelf. So, Scott, I hope this gives you some good information now, because here's the advantage you have. If, if Scott's a woodworker, which I consider myself from modeling a balsa woodworker, transferring that skill into painting, I think, is relatively uh, easy, not real difficult. There, there's just certain things that getting things flat, getting them smooth, they go hand in hand. I don't know how to explain it. It's a skill that's transferable. So, Scott, I did that little demo for you. I hope that helps. And I'm going to get busy getting this part prepped up. And maybe, just maybe, we get a break in the rain, get some prime on it. I've also, another thing with any part, any, and the odder shape it is, the worse it is. I've got to have a way to hold this. I can't just, just hold it in my hand and paint it. I've got to have some kind of a handle or a tang or a tab or something. I'll figure that out. So this is what we need to do this job. 600 Rhino Wet. I just ordered some 2000 Rhino Wet. I was getting low, but I have plenty of 600. 600, I've learned over the years that have gone by, if I do these flat black parts or plastic parts that don't have paint on them, with 400, I make this a little bit too rough and I've got to prime it and sand it a couple of times. The 600, I can get just enough of an etch to get a bond on that when I prime it and seal it and prime it with the primer sealer. So having 600 at this point is a critical thing. So these parts have already been cleaned with Simple Green and Steam Clean. And now the only thing left to do is get an etch surface and then get them back masked and get in all the little nooks and crannies. And so this will take a little longer than what you might think. The 600, at least if this is similar plastic to what I've used in the past, leaves just about the right etch on that, that you get a, a groove. But as an example, if you sanded this with 100 grit paper, You'd need a lot of prime, and I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to make it any thicker than it has to be. It's much more important to get just the right amount of etch in here. And we will really, I will spend the time necessary to get in all the little corners and angles and edges. And then most of all, to back mask off all these little tabs and whatnot here. It's, it looks like this would be a half an hour job. No, not really. But here's where having this variety of blocks, and I hope this works for Scott too, since he, he seems really intense on, uh, passionate is the word I like to use, on having a really custom, one-of-a-kind motorcycle. And I guess that's, to be honest, I think whether you buy it or you make it yourself, I think that's what most people want is a one-of-a-kind motorcycle. A Turbo Steve motorcycle. That really is a one-of-a-kind. The Visioni. Okay, so this is just going to be redundant, and I will spend whatever time it takes. It doesn't matter. It's a rainy day, and if I get this done, I may even get a break in the rain to get some prime on it. That'll be a free bonus, but it's a very predictable thing, and I just wanted to show. I always like to show, especially for the new people just looking at the first windy video. Let that dry up. The problem is here... This has got to dry before I can show it. And now you can see this is the, the etch side and this is the side. I got to pull these rubber grommets out too for the windshield, those little, little guys there. And that's basically when the whole part looks like that, I'm ready to do my next step. Now it's a critical thing to me to maintain all these body uh, fits and finishes to get all those little tabs and tangs back masked before I actually get this part ready to paint. And that was that was a little tricky. I had to put this part in its dummy position and see how much of this part actually showed and where those tabs and tangs go, and I think we got it. Now the next step on this part is to figure out how I'm gonna hold it. I gotta make some kind of a way of holding this part while I paint it. Now luckily just today, I got a whole slew of these sticks from Gavin's. And I'll try to figure a way to do this. I can hot glue it on on some angle. It won't really matter because I need a place, while the, especially while the clear is drying, to hang this up. I can't just lay this down anywhere. 
And with all these little tabs and everything, I want it to be, well, when I put it under the heating vent, I want it to be just hanging by something. All right, so I guess this is going to be pretty, pretty cut and dry. I want to have it here. Yeah, that'll hold it up. This is not one of those critical things. And this will come off with alcohol or sandpaper, one or the other. And because of Karen using this in some of her projects, we have a good experience with hot glue. You wouldn't think it would be such a critical thing, but you, a part like this, you have to have a way of holding it, especially when we're putting on the final coats of clear. And a lot of people would just hold it somehow with pliers or, well, this seems to work pretty well. Now the final step on this is prep, prep all it up. Hopefully don't have any fish eyes on it, but if we were to have a fish eye, I would come right into the house and wipe this off. Just wipe it off with paper towels, and if that didn't take the primer off, add some acetone. That's, that's a trick worth its weight in gold. The day you spray primer and there's a fish eye, well, you know it can only get worse. <laughs> that fish eye is now buried in your, I don't know. It's, it's always, it'll always come back to bite you right in the butt. And anytime you paint anything plastic, it's not primer that you want to have. It's primer sealer. This will seal the plastic and keep it from melting if you get a really wet coat on there. Primer sealer, and I haven't found Rust-Oleum or Duplicola to be any different. They both work equally well. So like anything you prime, the idea is to get it Two coats about 20 minutes apart, two light coats, no runs at all, and get it hanging up by a heating vent or, or move to California where the weather's warm. Anyway, the handle actually worked out pretty good. So I can picture we can uh, add. When people start painting, when they're at in the beginning of the learning curve, the first thing they realize is, oh, how the hell am I going to hold that? Same thing when I started working in a machine shop. Yeah, how do you hold that when it's in the bridge port or the lathe? Or, uh, yeah, every, everything's easy. Everybody's a good parent until you have children. They're perfect up by the heating vent, and believe me, that heat in an old house this old, that heat almost never shuts off. Almost never. So after looking at many of the pictures that I have of the motorcycle that I took before we disassembled it, I think this will be a little bit nicer if these are black too. And I'll try to use up some of the time today. Do exactly the same thing I did with our first part that's in primer. If we can get these in primer, and again, we have places flat to block sand, edges to radius, and we may even get it to stop raining another 10 minutes so we can get some primer on them. That'll be real nice. And of course, a way to hold it. Now here's a really good example of where to use a hard block. This has this little like texture, like a, uh, I don't know, diamond plate supposed to make it look, look like something anyway. We don't know what. Kawasaki doesn't know what. But if I sand that off with some 220 paper or something, what's going to happen? It leaves deep scratches and then I need a ton of primer on here. I don't want to have a lot of primer on here, but this is just one place it's really a good idea, or it's to my advantage, to have that hard, that wood sanding block. And this is what it looks like sanded and unsanded. Of course, <laughs> it's pretty easy to figure this out. The next step is the other side, and then we'll have to make some kind of mount to hold it while we prime it and hope that the rain doesn't continue. Now, the last piece of the puzzle today is to get these some way I can hold them. I think that'll be fine and then hope it didn't start raining again out there which it's been on and off for the last couple hours and as always in our shop every day is a unique adventure every day I try to plan something and I got to work around a lot of a lot of variable things now the last thing the prep wall and the tack rig and and then let's see if the weather's cooperating they turned out to be, we used up a rainy day that, that really was no way to, to do any reasonable painting outside. 
but I did manage to sneak in between the raindrops and I have three parts ready for the next step tomorrow. It looks like these parts that had the little traction, it may need an extra coat of prime, I don't know. We're gonna find out tomorrow when I dry. But here's the nice thing, this is what I like, is when I have this rack and I can just hang them up by the heating vent and it's as simple as that. Tomorrow those parts will be totally dry. So I hope you enjoyed the video and stay out of the rain. Thanks for watching.